Hi there, my name is Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is going to be another fix it video, another video where I bought something faulty off eBay and I'm going to do my best to repair it. So I know what's in here, so let me just show you. Da -da. Sega Game Gear. Right, okay, with a game as well, columns. I presume that's like Tetris. And it's also got the backs on it, which is pretty good. Right, okay, so uh, I've never owned one of these before, and from memory, I don't think I've played on one before. So let me show you the listing. Looks okay, it's a bit, bit scratched up. Well, the screen is very scratched up, but uh, it looks complete enough. Right, okay, let me show you the listing, show you what I paid for. I got this for a bit of a bargain, in my opinion. So I got it for, it was £11, this was off eBay, and uh, £11 and £2.95 postage. So, £13.95, so just under £14. And it just says on here, it says a Sega Game Gear console, faulty for spares or repair. And if I was to go down here, it's got plenty of pictures with it, and it just says, it's very, very simple, it says, 40 Sega Game Gear in game, I'm told the caps will need replacing, solders 40, unfortunately. Right, so it doesn't say anything else, so it's just very, uh, very brief, but basically what that means is, told the caps are faulty. Whenever you look up about Game Gear faults, all everybody else ever says is that you need to replace all the capacitors on the inside. So, I've actually bought some of these previously, this is a recent one I bought, but I have actually bought others that I meant to do for a video, but I never got round to it. So I did actually buy a couple of capacitor kits. Now it's probably a slightly more expensive way of doing it, but when you're not 100% sure of what you're doing, it's easy just to get the kit. But now I'm starting to understand a bit more about capacitors, it would be probably cheaper to get them you know, in bulk, because if you were to buy 10 off each, they'd probably work out to be very cheap. But I paid, I think it was £6 something for each of these, I think it was... I think it was £6.89, and there's 20 capacitors in here, so it's not expensive, but I'm sure you could get the price right down if you were to do loads of them. But the good thing about this is somebody else has already worked out which capacitors you need, and they put them into a kit for you. Now, part of me just thinks, well, you know, I should just re uh, replace every single capacitor in here, because that's what most people do, but... Part of me would also like to pinpoint the one or two faulty capacitors. Maybe there's ten that's faulty. If there's only one that's faulty, then it'd be nice just to replace that one, just to see it working. Obviously, if you were to replace all of them, then it's probably going to last another 20 years, you know, without these failing. While if you just replace one, who knows, three weeks down the line, another one might go, and a year down the line, another one might go. But I'm going to see, you know, I'm going to open it up and see what condition it is on the, is in on the inside. You know, maybe I could just replace what I think is the faulty one to see if it works, and then it's up to me whether I want to replace the rest or not. So certainly we're not going to need two kits, but uh, I have got the kit there. That's if it is a problem with the capacitor. I don't know the seller. I don't know who told him it was a problem. Everyone seems to say it's a problem with the capacitors, but surely there must be other faults on it as well. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. We're going to be fault finding this and seeing what's wrong with it. So to begin with, I'm going to put some batteries in and then uh, we'll see exactly what the fault is. Okay, first of all, let's pop some batteries in this. Handheld came out in 19, I think it was 1991 in Europe and I think it was 1990 in uh, 1990 in Japan and so that makes it now you know like about 27 years old so it's really getting on a bit at the time I uh, remember back then I wanted the Atari Lynx but unfortunately it was just a little bit too expensive for you know when I was younger right okay let's uh, turn it on see what happens right maybe those batteries are no good Annoyingly, it just says DC 9 volts. It doesn't actually say about the polarity because I have got uh, a, a, uh, the AC power supplies for a master system and the Mega Drive. But when I looked at them on both of my ones, the inner pin is negative and the outer pin is positive. And luckily, I had a look online and uh, on the Game Gear on a forum, somebody said that the inner pin was positive and the outer is negative, which is kind of standard. So it was a good job I didn't put it in because it, it would probably, I haven't tried it, but it, it might well fit. But just because it fits, it doesn't mean it's the right power supply. Right, okay, well, there's absolutely nothing here, but that could be because of my batteries. So I'm going to uh, hunt around the house now and see if I've got more batteries. 
Right, okay, I really need to buy some AA batteries, but uh, I've got these ones here. I've measured them, they're, they're not new, but they're all reading 1.4 something, so I'm hoping that will be uh, that will be enough. A couple of them are reading 1.5 something. Uh, so hopefully now, that should be enough to get this going. No. So maybe the problem is, I was, ex do you know what I was expecting? I was expecting a screen problem or a sound problem because the things I hear is that if the sound's rude, oh here it's coming on now. Does it normally take that long? Oh, here we go. Right, okay. Let's turn that off and back on again. Actually, actually one second, let's put the volume up. Right, let's volume up full. Oh, I wonder would bad capacitors cause that on the screen or is it a problem with the actual screen? Well, it's definitely doing something, isn't it? Do you know what? Just in case it is a dodgy game, I have got myself a couple of games. Quite possibly the best ones in the world. Wonder Boy and also Super Off-Road. Who doesn't love a bit of Super Off-Road? Right. Okay, so it's not the game. Strange that we haven't got any sound or anything coming out of it. Right, okay, I think we'll take it apart and see uh, if we can see anything. I'm not 100% confident now what's happening here because I was expecting, like I said, you know, bad sound or a very bad screen, yeah, possibly being able to see it from certain angles. But with this one, there's no sound and also there's no, uh, you know, there's nothing on the screen either apart from that, which, you know, that could be a faulty LCD, couldn't it? Right, okay, uh, do you know what, I have got another, I have got more of these that I haven't taken apart, so in this video I might well have to, I might well have to, you know, go on to them to see what it should do, because I don't know what it should do when you turn it on. Right, okay, well anyway, before I do that, let's take it apart and see what's, see what's going on with it. So we need one of these special game bit screws that you need to undo the, uh, do you remember the Sega Mega Drive cartridge if you watched that video off mine? And I didn't have one but I just bodged it with some long nose pliers, well I've actually bought one now. So it's coming handy, there you go, it's going to be so much easier. Oh wow. Okay, uh Yeah, okay, it doesn't look pristine here. But that's just that's just plastic which has got like chrome plating on. I don't know why they would put why would they put chrome plating on that? Is it so when you look in the top it looks nice? I don't know. Pardon, I'm not sure. Right, okay, uh So to remove this I've just got to undo a couple of these little connectors here. Looks like they just unplug. And they unplug really easy. Right, so this is gonna be right, so this is for the power 
and also the audio. So we've got no audio, so there might be issues here. And, well, we do have power. Right, okay, that's that bit. And this is the bit here. Do you know what, I'm wondering. It's very damaged, very damaged. Look. Up here, up this side, all looks very corroded. I wonder, has it had some kind of water damage? Hmm. Can you see the board up here? See, it's kind of flaking off. And this side here looks good. So there's definitely a difference between the right hand side and the left hand side. And this was where the screws were hard to undo as well. So I don't think this has got to do with battery leakage on this side. I think it might be something more than that. Because if you if you look in here, it just seems to be quite powdery and it's not on this side. If you look this side, it's nice. Right, okay, so it definitely doesn't look too clever over this side here. I mean, if you look at that one labelled up as C3 there, you know, you can barely you can barely sort of make out the definition of it because it looks that corroded. I mean, maybe stuff has leaked out of the capacitors and leaked over to it, but everything just looks a bit shot to bits. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. And also one here, you can see where the part of the damage is. So it's this side of the board that looks to be you know, worse than the other side. And if you have a look, all the silver flake is coming off here. So maybe that's what the mess is. You know, I said all that white residue, thinking about it, it looks like it's from here rather than water, but I don't know what's caused this to break down. Maybe it is just, uh, I don't know, maybe it's just age. Well, I'm gonna take this off so I can have a look at the back of the board, because I suppose if it's been put into water, it might give me an indication uh, by looking at the back of the board. So I'm not sure now how easy this is going to be to take off. Just thinking about it, that's probably the light, isn't it? The backlight to light up the screen. And this is the shield to uh, uh, protect the heat, you know, stop the heat from going this side. can't take it off because the LCD is actually kind of just like glued there's no there's no connector that comes on and off that's not very nice is it could that be part of the problem you know if there was a bad if there was bad contacts here I wonder whether it would be worth turning it on again and pressing down on these contacts just to see what happens because some of them look a little bit they look slightly different colors than the others so maybe maybe some of them are, are making a better contact right okay uh, that's a shame that they've done it like that just looking at the board this side here definitely been corrosion on this side yeah look I mean, surely that button can't even work what's that button there this one even a bit of circuit board on that there you know this silk screen or whatever it's called right that button's not going to work Do you know I'm not sure how repairable this one's going to be because it looks to me as if we're dealing with more than just capacitors. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some rubbing alcohol and uh, I'm going to clean this up, the, uh, sorry, the IPA stuff. I'm going to clean it up and see how it comes up, see if it comes up clean. If it comes up clean, we might be okay. It feels kind of slimy, a little bit slimy over this side compared to the other side. So this side here is nice and smooth. So this is nice and smooth, but this feels like it's had uh, a battery leak all over it, you know? 
off. Well, let me clean it up, and then we'll see uh, we'll see what's uh, what's going to happen. Right, so this is the 99.9% .9 alcohol stuff. I'm just going to use one of these fiberglass pens just to give it a little rub, try and get the, the brightness back on it again. Also, the, the track looks like it's been exposed a bit. If I was to zoom in there, can you see that the track going down here looks a bit exposed? But maybe what I can do is, if I have a closer look, maybe that leads to here or something, in which case then I might be able to kind of just redo that track. Right, okay, so basically it's good around this bit here, and it's good here, and it's good here, and luckily this middle bit is good because this is the important bit, but it's not good here, and I don't know whether I'm down to the board now, or whether, you know, I don't know if this is the crud on top. Let me just scrape it. Let me go on this bit here, and then I can, I might be able to tell. That is, hold on, that's still just crud on top, I think. Oh, I don't know, maybe I'm down to, do you know what? I really can't tell through here. Let me clean that. Excellent, it was just crud on top, so I just need to scrape it more there, and uh, that should be back to normal. There we go, that's looking a bit better, isn't it? It's definitely duller, it hasn't got that gold shine that all the other ones have. I suppose the other thing you could do is you could probably tin it with a little bit of solder, but I think this is going to be good enough now. So if we go here. Yeah, there we go. Right, okay, so that's that side done. Right, I'm wondering, is it worth messing around with that bottom bit there just yet? I suppose I could try, couldn't I? Right, the camera's not going to pick it up, but I'm pressing the bottom, and the uh, it's not changing the lines going down the screen. So maybe it's got nothing to do with that. You can just about see super. Oh, you can see it a little bit. It came up with S there. It did come up with S. I can see super off-road. Right, okay. Well, do you know, that's good. I can see super off-road. So what I'm going to do is, I am going to go and change those capacitors, because... I think it's worth the risk. Right, so to begin with, I'm just going to break each of the sort of uh, blue seals. I'm doing it as gently as I can because I don't want to rip the things off their pads. Right, okay, so for this one up here, I'm not going to do it for all of them because uh, the video will take too long, but this is 100 and then it says 6.3 volts. So uh, on this one, I've got 6.3 volts and then uh, underneath that, it says 100. Now with these, if you're wondering which one is negative, well it will have a little negative symbol next to the shorter leg. And also if you think negative is like minus, and if you have a look at the legs here, can you see that this one is minus the metal? Yeah, so normally the longer leg will be positive and the shorter leg will be negative. So I'm going to turn the fan on so I don't breathe in any of these fumes.
Right, okay, so that is all the capacitors done. Yeah, so I've got them all here. And I am happy with the way it's come out. It was, it wasn't really easy, but it wasn't really hard either. It was okay, you know, I'll be happy doing that again. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is put it back together. So put this little soundboard back in, put the uh, power board back in, and then put it all back together and we'll see. May, there might be loads of other thoughts on this. I really haven't got a clue. Or I might be lucky and that might have fixed it. I definitely need to double check that button. You know, make sure that this button is working okay and nice and responsive. If not, I'll have to take it apart. And maybe I can tin it by just putting flux on and rub the soldering iron over it with just a tiny bit of solder all over it just to give it a new shiny coating. Uh, I presume uh, the, the solder will work just as well as the kind of like... Uh, copper coated or whatever it is on there at the moment, the shiny copper. So uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing now. So now we just need to pop the batteries back in and it will be time to test. So what do you think? Yes or no? I'll be honest with you, I'm unsure because of the uh, corrosion and stuff on it as well. But I'll be honest with you, I will be a bit disappointed because I'm thinking it might work. Ah, oh, for God's sake. Right, it doesn't work. It's more colourful than it was before. Ah, oh, yeah. Do you know what? Oh, let's put this in and see what happens. Maybe it's an LCD problem. Still haven't got any volume. Okay, I can hear stuff now. There's just nothing coming up on the uh, on the screen. Let's see if the brightness works. Yeah. And I can't even swap it out with another one because the screen is part of the motherboard. So really, the only thing that's usable on this would be, for example, the buttons, and uh, you know the sound board, which sounds like it's working now and also the power board and the casing and things like the batteries back here. Right, okay, uh, do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna have a look on Google, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm disappointed, but I'm gonna have a look on Google and see what, you know, what this represents, if it's a faulty LCD, see if there's any fixes for it. I mean, it's certainly nice and bright and everything. Right, okay, let's just try try one other game. In case there's a problem with reading the games or something, but to me it's more to do with the screen. This time though I can't even see, I think last time I, I made out some, some of it. Okay, well that sound card's definitely working, because it's nice and loud. Right, so that says to me the game is being read. So I think it's a problem with the display. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to Google it and see what it is, just in case it's a simple fix, but I don't think it will be. Well, OK, bad news. Apparently it's not repairable. I've been looking on Google and uh, what they're saying is that uh, if you've got vertical lines, then it doesn't, uh, it doesn't work because you can't be fixed because it's something to do with around the actual LCD itself there's like uh, three ICs I think integrated circuits and uh, they work for a third of the screen each so basically if they fail these are the results you get so I'm looking here it looks like maybe these two have completely failed and this is nearly failed because at least there's colors on this one if it's horizontal lines and I believe you can kind of try to resolder the, the, 
the ribbon cable but with the vertical lines it's something to do with these chips and it's it's, it's scrap apparently now there is a mod you could do to replace the screen but I've had a look on eBay and there doesn't seem to be any for sale it just seems to be a service that people provide and they're asking for like I think it was 150 pounds or something along those lines so it's a lot of money to get I mean the screen looks much better but for me it's not worth it problem is I've kind of already spent quite a bit of time on this you know cleaning it and also recapping it and uh, I really tried to do a good job on the changing the capacitors so it's a shame now but I'm not going to give up that easy because I've really spent time on this and this is what these videos are about you know this is real life uh, unfortunately you know this is it if you knew what you were doing as soon as you've seen this you would have said okay it's not worth recapping this one because it's an issue with the screen but obviously I didn't know that and everything you read initially says change the caps change the caps change the caps so that's what I did so I'm going to take it apart again now and I want, I want to see these chips to see what they look like I know it can't be repaired but I just want to see you know just in case there is some bit of water damage or something to something that I can get at so uh, I'm definitely not going to give up without a fight so let's get this thing apart and let's have another look at this screen right okay I presume it means these things here these three things for each third of the screen which would sort of make sense wouldn't it uh, so what I'd have to do is I'd have to try and work out what's going on don't know what this one at the side is for maybe that one's to do with the ribbon with the horizontal lines or something don't know it looks like there's these three here so what I'm going to do is before I dismantle it any further I'm just going to put pressure on them just to see what uh, see what's happening so I need to put the batteries back in this and plug it in I mean I know I'm not going to fix it but I just want to uh, you know I just want to learn a bit more about it really the envelope it came in there we go all right that's not gonna shouldn't cause any problems I'm gonna turn it on this is upside down I don't oh, there we go look I've got two two lots of lines now we're making progress right okay so uh, uh, okay when you put pressure on here gaming back to one lot lines lines again and then here we go they are definitely coming and going of course I'm not going to hear any sound am I because uh, I haven't got the speaker plugged in right so when I put pressure on it there I've got lines everywhere but obviously there's no uh, there's no picture there is there Oh, here we go, here we go, here's a bit of picture. Right, I'm going to turn it off, I'm going to undo the actual screen and uh, I am going to muck around with the ribbon cable at the bottom here down here just to see if it does anything okay, Well, I am going to apply a bit of pressure here just to see if it makes any difference but from what I believe it's these, uh, these uh, things here oh, I've got a shock there 
Cause that was quite a big. Uh, that felt like quite a big shock, for uh, <laughs> considering it's just off uh, six 1.5 volt batteries. Right, let's pick that up carefully. I wonder what I went against there. Oh, it must have been the fluorescent tube. Yeah, that's what I touched. I can do a continuity test between anything. You can see just a bit of an emblem up there now. Can you see? Just in this corner. Yeah, which is the columns, and now there's something down the bottom. Right, okay, I'm just going to keep looking at this, and uh, yeah, I'll, uh, if I discover anything, then I'll get back to the video. So I'm going to get like a magnifying glass and have a real close look at it along here just to see if I, see if I can see what's going on. All right, okay, if I just turn off this light here, you can slightly make out things. So basically I've just been putting pressure along this bit here. And now if you have a look, you can, uh, you can sort of make out score there. There you go, it's gone back to Sega or something. But uh, the weird thing is now is that uh, if you look here, the contrast isn't really doing anything. So I'm moving the contrast up and down, and it's not uh, doing anything. I wonder when I got that little shock off it, would that have been, would that have been enough to, you know, blow something? So, uh, you know, because before I know the screen was broken, but at least when I did the contrast, it made a difference. But now it's not making any difference. So when I turn it off, and then back on here, there you go. Look, you can see I'm seeing more of the screen now, but yet that before you couldn't see that but yet when I do the contrast over here it's not doing anything so I wonder have I uh, have I blown another capacitor but there's definitely more there than there was before so I'm going to uh, just keep looking what I have noticed if you look very closely here if you look up to the top left on each of them there's like a smudge top left smudge and top left is like a kind of a moisture smudge or something I mean maybe that was always there from you so I'll keep looking at it here we go here you have Wonder Boy the ultimate challenge mode trying to get through a level with no screen. Yeah, so as you guessed it, no, I could not get this to work. I tried everything. So I have actually got another three Game Gears that I got before this one. I bought 141 and another 241s off the one seller. So uh, I just did this one because it was the most recent one and I just thought it might be, uh, you know, I thought it might be an easy fix. So what I'm going to now do is I'm going to try and fix up those other Game Gears and I will do videos on them as well. Maybe I'll do two on the one video from the one seller and then, uh, you know, one on the, the other video. This isn't a complete waste of money because it's got spares on it. Even the backs here cost a little bit of money. They're normally missing. There's other things I can use as well, like the case is okay. The, the glass is a bit scratched up, but the case is okay. Uh, if I ever needed battery terminals, you know, I can use them because a lot of times they're probably going to be rusted out. So for me, it's still worth the £14. As far as the video is concerned, it's a shame that I couldn't get it working because it's much nicer to have a working product at the end. But remember, this is real life and I'm honest. I didn't get this fixed, so I'm going to still put the video out there because now if you're watching this, you might have the same problem. If you've got a vertical screen, personally, I wouldn't bother changing the capacitors over because I think it's a waste of time. But obviously, if anybody knows different, then please add it to the comments because you really will help other people out watching this video who has the same who has the same fault. So, uh, yeah, apologies that I couldn't show you a working one at the end. I can show you one with sounds, but just not with any... Uh, not with any picture so i hope you did enjoy this video a bit if you did please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos more trying to fix and failing videos and more how-to videos as well thanks for watching take care bye now